Titingin ka po sa akin ng may paghana. <laughs> Dapat hindi kalimutan yung gusto ng Panginoon to, to really help out the poor and the marginalized. Hi brothers and sisters, welcome to the finale episode of What Ails You? This online series is part of our celebration of the 41st anniversary of CFC with the theme, Heal the World for Christ. In this series, we bring to you stories and insights about what bring healing to things that ail us. I'm your host, Robert Labayan, journeying with you on this path to healing. Last time we had with us our brother, Rudy Gaspilio, and we talked about what ails the poor and what we can do to help answer their cry. And if you haven't seen that episode, just uh, you can watch it on this channel and also watch all the other episodes before that. And brothers and sisters, please feel free to write down your comments and feedback so that we may know what you think of our discussions. Today, as a finale to our series, we're going to talk about a topic on the same grand scale. It is something that affects us and may even affect all our children. It's about what ails society. Our guest for today, for this finale episode, is a member of the International Council, and he used to be the chairman of it too. He also served as the head of our Vatican Relations Office based in Rome. And our brother is a lawyer by profession. Today, together with lovely wife, Baby Lou, they are now residing in California, USA. Brothers and sisters, let us welcome our good-looking brother, Joe Tale. <laughs> Hi, Tito Joe. Hello, Robert. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you again. We're always happy to see you and uh, Sister Baby Lou. Would you like to tell us how you have been the past years? Well, uh, by God's grace, we are safe and well here in California. And uh, actually, I'm also grateful that uh, I'm part of this What Ails series. And Brother Robert, I'd like to congratulate you for handling this uh, series really well up to this finale. Thank you. I thank you. Sir. Thank you also to the staff and the production team. Uh, brother, my question is a uh, Miss Universe type of question. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, what ails society? Is it an easy or hard question, Brother Joe? Well, Brother Robert, uh, it is uh, a difficult question. And so I start by acknowledging that. And uh, this is a, really a broad and daunting subject and therefore quite challenging. Uh, much can be said about it. You know, if we ask an ordinary man in the street or somebody with a PhD in sociology or even a theologian, I'm sure we will get as many varied opinions. Yes, I and, uh, yeah, and in fact, in the context of, the, of CFC, we are a global community present in about 130 countries. And so another dimension further complicates it. One may ask, which society are we referring to? Is it the Philippine situation, the society of the Western world, or that of developing countries, etc.? Yes, I know, Father Joe. I don't even know where to begin with this big <laughs> topic. But please tell us uh, how we can observe how our society works today. Yes, uh, well, I would like to further say that uh, at the outset, I'd like to share where we are coming from, no? what or whose perspe perspective we are expressing our views and through what lens we are viewing the situation and thus making this evaluation. Uh, that said, no, on my part, may I say that these observations are coming from a simple observer of things, seeing it from the lens of a member of a family renewal movement uh, which also calls for us to be part of the social renewal of the world. And, uh, you know, we are celebrating our 41st years of existence this month. And uh, given this, Brother Robert, uh, this view is coming from one exposed to scripture study through spiritual formation teachings, have traveled to different areas to share the good news of God's goodness, and in the process has prayed and worshiped broken bread, and worship, and fellowship with many Christians, many Catholics of different races and cultures. 
So um, in short, I express the view of an informal student of humanity <laughs> who knows there is so much more to know and understand. You know, Father Joe, how much we value your opinion on things. So if we're going to narrow down, what areas would you like us to zoom in on? Yes, uh, that's very useful, Brother Robert, because uh, uh, obviously we cannot cover all the ails of society in this interview. And uh, since discussions of this nature can go off in many direct directions, I propose to focus on three areas which I believe will adequately cover in general what ails our society today. Uh, these areas um, is first uh, disregard, uh, a growing disregard of the truth. Secondly, uh, indifference or lack of compassion for one another. And third, a loss of the sense of the sacred. So while and while we will be mostly speaking of the ails of the society, we will also in the process attempt to propose what might be solutions to address and overcome the same. Yes, Father John. I think these are precise uh, topics to focus on. Let's start with the truth. Yes, um, you know, uh, truth is a basic foundation of any society. If it is trampled upon, confusion sets in and society is eventually weakened and maybe even destroyed. And today there is a proliferation of lies and truth and fake news. And this is globally happening, not just here, uh, not just in the Philippines. And what uh, exacerbates this is that the trolls which spread them are aided by the ease of the use of social media. And uh, this is truly alarming because if we don't know what is true or false, uh, how do we go about uh, living our lives? No? Well, the, the recent Philippine elections have brought this evil to the fore. Uh, I believe if you recall the election statement of our uh, CBCP, uh, they warned of widespread attempts at disinformation. Yes, Father Joe, that is really true. And it's a matter of concern. I have even heard some people say that there's no longer any absolute truth or objective truth. They say that truth is a matter of perspective. It's just what people choose to believe. So what is your stand on this uh, controversial argument, Brother Joe? Well, I certainly do not agree with that, uh, Brother Robert. Uh, I believe there is an objective truth against which uh, most everything we say should be assessed against. Yeah. Uh, actually, if I may, you know, uh, I don't know if some of you or, or our audience remember a song way back in the 60s. By the way, that's my generation. <laughs> yeah, I was a little boy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, But there is this song which uh, I remember particularly for this interview. It's, it's a song called Shades of Grey and sung by, the group, by a group called The Monkeys. You know, it's a little uncanny when... We hear it. No, I, I will not sing it, Brother Robert. I will just say the <laughs> lyrics. No, <laughs> it says, No, when the world and I were young, just yesterday, life was such a simple game a child could play. It was easy then to tell right from wrong, easy then to tell weak from strong, when a man should stand and fight or just go along. But today, there is no day or night. Today there is no dark or light. Today there is no black or white, only shades of gray. And if I may continue on the second verse, it says, I remember when the answer seemed so clear. We had never lived with doubt or tasted fear. It was easy then to tell, to tell truth from lies, selling out from compromise, who to love and who to hate, the foolish from the wise. Father Joe, I think you were also still a young boy when this song was a hit because you are still young. But I <laughs> okay. think although it was written in the 60s, it's still relevant today or probably ahead of its time. I now have, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, that's true, Brother Robert. In fact, as I mentioned, it is somewhat uncanny that, uh, you know, in the time, the 60s, it talked about a phenomenon that is now 
we now experience now in the 2020s. So if I may continue on, Brother Robert. No? Yes, Paul. Um, you know, I'm not sure if many of us realize that the fuzziness of the truth and the lies has even reached a number of areas. One of examples is, is the gender debate, you know, which uh, somewhat goes like this, no? Someone can claim that my gender, whether male or female, depends on what I feel that I am, regardless of the obvious physical characteristics of, who, of my body. And uh, th th this is to me alarming because even here in the US, this, is, this kind of teaching is already being taught in, grade in the grade school, to grade school students in the public schools particularly. Can you believe that? When you know, our, our pupils are taught that you know, no matter what you look like, if you say that uh, you're a woman, even if you're a man, then that's what, uh, that's what is true. So it, it's, really, it's really alarming to me, Brother Robert. And so uh, we actually should be on the alert that uh, this teaching is, might also reach, in the, might reach us in the Philippines. It, and, Joe, uh, uh, sorry. Yes, please continue, Brother. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, this, that is just one example. I can I can go on with other examples because uh, the master of lies, who is Satan, who is behind this phenomenon, can even lead some to even more evil and scarier situations. Yeah, that's true, Brother Joe. In fact, I can tell that this distorted ways of of looking at things is slowly or threateningly becoming normal. So what do you think, Mother Joe, can we do? Yes, uh, precisely that's the core of the question. Thank you, Brother Robert, for asking that because uh, again, there are many things we can do, but let me just focus on uh, what we can do where we are. Huh? To me, uh, this highlights the importance of leading uh, the people, leading our members, uh, for example, first, to, to Christ, leading the, them to Christ and to strengthen our basic values, uh, the, the values we hold dear, beginning in the family. And, uh, you know, we can take comfort in, in what the Lord says in John 8, 31 to 32. says, if you abide in my word and are truly my disciples, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes, I agree. I think this is um, becoming an eye-opening conversation, brother. So those of us watching, please, I hope you are listening well and uh, taking the insights being shared by our brother, Joe. Brother Joe, can we continue with uh, what you mentioned, the lack of compassion? How does it ail our society? Sure, brother Robert, because... Uh... That that ail that ailment of our society is quite widespread, and to me that is really disappointing because our Lord Jesus and the Scriptures actually carry the theme of compassion throughout the Old Testament and the Gospel. This is, for example, highlighted in the parable of the Good Samaritan, which uh, where, uh, yeah, which Jesus used to illustrate his teaching on, of, on, on loving our neighbor, which he says is the second greatest commandment, loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now, if uh, I hope many of those listening still remember that parable that uh, where Jesus eventually said, our, our neighbor is those who need our help and who need our, our mercy. And uh, if I may continue, um, you know, in the Old Testament, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 58 focuses on the true fasting. Uh, you know, if, if you review that, uh, that particular verse, it is where the Lord through the prophet is saying that the, the kind of fasting that he is really looking for is essentially helping the poor and the margin, marginalized. You know, the, you know, in addition to our sacrifices for fasting, dapat hindi kalimutan yung gusto ng Panginoon to, to really help out the poor and the marginalized. And uh, this particular 
theme is carried through Isaiah 60 or 61, which was the actual scroll, which was handed over to Jesus. If you recall, which he read in the synagogue, uh, as mentioned yes, in yes. Luke 4, 18, right? yeah. where Jesus proclaimed, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. It's so, true that, uh, sorry, Father Joe. Yeah. So, uh, well, as I said, punong puno naman yung Bible and our scriptures of, of this theme, and yet, may mga, the, the opposite still happens. Yes. Right? A lot has been foreshadowed and foreseen by, by the writings of the Bible. So, Father Joe, what other refer references can we take from scripture that is relevant today? Well, th yes, uh, thank you. I'd like to mention also Matthew 25. Uh, which talks about that particular part which talks about the final judgment. No? Kasi in that, in that um, verse, Jesus was very clear that uh, what, will merit, uh, our, what will merit us on the day of judgment uh, the, to determine where we are going is how we have helped the poor, how we have fed the hungry and give water to the thirsty, clothed, but the naked and so forth and he is very clear on that and then conversely in that verse he says the, the what will merit those who don't do this he said if you don't do this you are going to another place you're going to hell so, uh, very clear ang, ano, ng Panginoon dito. so in fact i invite many of uh, our audience to reread Matthew 25, and reflect on that passage because the, the Lord Jesus could not have been any clearer yeah. in his teaching. And in fact, Matthew 25 uh, has given rise to what is known as the corporal acts of mercy. Yeah. I think uh, in the corporal acts of mercy, these are very specific mandates from our Lord. And yet society in general continues to be indifferent and wanting in compassion for the poor. And the marginalized. What can you say about that, Brother Joe? Well, uh, yes, that's right, Brother Robert. And as I said earlier, and th th this is a source of disappointment because hindi naman nagkulang panginoon to remind us what to do. And yet today, one glaring example of this is the widening gap between the rich and the poor. You know, we know this is happening. Uh, we experience it in in our country, and Pope Francis highlights this in his re recent book uh, entitled Let Us Dream, you know, the, the Path to a Better Future. He writes, barely more than 1% of the world's population owns half of its wealth. Can you, can you imagine? Let that sink in for a while, Brother Robert, because it, it talks about really the gap when only 1% of the world's population owns half of the resources and the wealth of the world. Oh. You know, there is something not right in that. It's an imbalance. Oh. The, yeah, the great imbalance. And, um, you know, this might be, uh, it might be said to just refer to the, to the poor countries. It is true, but, uh, you know, this gap is also spreading to more places in our planet. And even in the so-called wealthiest nation in the world, the USA, where we are in right now, there is a creeping poverty and homelessness in many of its states, actually, which is, you know, quite, uh, um, again, uh, disappointing in this land of plenty. Meron pa rin ganon. Yes. Brother Joy, you are actually affirming what was discussed during the episode with Brother Rudy on what ails the poor. So let me address our audience. Brothers and sisters, I can, I'm sure you can see how things are connected. And healing is really needed. It begins with us, our attitude towards our brothers, and the healing that should go uh, to a bigger scale, that is our society. Brother Joe, what do you mean by the loss of the sense of the sacred? Thank you, Brother Robert. Um, the loss of the sense of the sacred referred to uh, the general action of many. Now, parang there, there is nothing sacred anymore. Uh, the, there is disregard to the values that have been taught to us. And um, 
we normally refer this to, to religion and the values that we inculcate from there. You know, when we, there's a loss of the sense of the sacred when, well, first, if people don't realize what is the sacred anymore, that's even bothersome, or even if they do know what is wrong and yet they disregard this. And uh, uh, this is to me a uh, symptom also that is uh, that, that, that also points us to the decline in Christianity and Catholicism, uh, especially in the Western countries, because actually Catholicism and Christianity continues to grow in such areas of, as Africa and, the, and South America. But, uh, you know, in the Western countries, maybe I'm talking of Northern America, North America and, and Europe, uh, there is the sense that religion is no longer an influencing uh, factor. Here in the Americas, there is even a joke that the fastest growing religion is the religion of the nuns, spelled N-O-N-E-S, <laughs> not in the Yuma Madre. No? Uh -huh. the, the fastest growing religion is the religion of the nuns or the disaffiliated, because this refers to the those who check no religion in, 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 in forms that they fill up or in the surveys that they answer. And, and thus this, this group no longer goes to church or attend other spiritual activities. Now, some might say you are too alarming, uh, but the st statistics uh, show that this is really an alarming decline because the numbers indicate that for the Catholic youth, for example, here in the US, uh, this is affecting 50% or half wow. of all the American youth. So, so it is quite serious. And if you add to this, you know, the, the uh, many of us know that uh, there has been a movement and it's actually happening that re removal of crucifixes in the schools and the yeah. disallowance of prayers in, in the schools, you know, yeah. this all contribute to the loss of the sense of the state credit. Yes, yes, uh, Father Joe. I'm really concerned because I think that trend in other countries is also happening in the Philippines, isn't it? Yes, that's true. And, uh, you know, you might ask, our audience might ask, where, where is this uh, happening? I mean, what indications that there is really a loss of the sense of the sacred? But Brother Robert, I think it is most felt in respect for in respect of the respect for human life. No? Uh, take the case of abortions, which are really murders no? of helpless by babies while in their mother's wombs. I, I read somewhere in an article that the victims of abortion has reached about 50 to 60 million babies in the past few years. Now, this number is much more than those who died due to the COVID pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And also it is more than those who died during the two world wars that happened in this century. And uh, when you think that, I mean, the governments, for example, are so, are so uh, focused on, on, on the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, it's not as concerned about abortions. In fact, what is mm. even al more alarming is that some, I mean, governments, some states here in the U.S. also even support abortion. And it's a, it's a big deal. But, you know, again, if you're worried about COVID pandemic, and rightly so, we should be worried and we should be concerned. But let us not do that at the expense of not worrying about what happens yeah. in the area of abortion. We should also be as concerned even more. Yeah. And Brother Robert, uh, in addition, if I just may continue, uh, you know, I many of you are following the news, no? That uh, again, I, I use the US because this is where we are right now. There has been a series of senseless yeah massive killings and shootings recently 
and in varied places. Can be the schools, the malls, the medical buildings, yeah. parking spaces, etc. And these are happening only a few days of each other. Yeah. You know, before it might happen, you know, uh, years with years Five in between, years. but now it's yeah. happening more often. Yeah, Mother Joe. So we wish that you're you're safe there right now. Yes, we are. Yeah, Thank it you. It's really scary. That's great. Yeah, and you know, uh, I think last uh, past years we heard about a lot of killings in the Philippines as well. Even a local uh, government officials were ambushed; they were killed, and a lot were killed in what is called the uh, drug war. Suspected uh, drug users and pushers. And I think that whether it's unjustified or some people say it's justified killing, I think the value of human life is, is diminishing uh, to, to many people. Yes. So I would like to know what you think can we do as CFC, Brother Joe? So Brother Robert, you know, uh, amidst these societal problems, um, we don't have to look far in so far as solutions are concerned. Because I believe we are blessed that we are in CFC. We are blessed that we are in CFC because in addition to what we can do through our own individual initiatives, we also have concrete opportunities co collectively to respond and do our part to help address what ails our society. For example, as a family re renewal movement, we have been continuously enjoined and formed to strengthen our time-honored values, beginning in our respective families and involving to the family ministries, you know, emphasizing the values of truth, of compassion, and respect for the sacred, starting with respect for life. Yes, Brother Joe, it is good that in CFC we have a way of showing our compassion to the least the last and the lost our brothers and sisters in the peripheries so yeah that's a that's a good thing to know brother joe yes and further on brother robert uh, you know through, through our evangelization mission and pastoral formation we are also able to bring many more closer to christ and strengthen their sense of the sacred and um uh, Sometimes we are, we don't, um, you know, take this away. We take this for granted when, when we hold our households, our assemblies, our conferences, we are actually helping build sacred spaces whenever we do this globally. And um, if I may also cite that uh, we are able to encourage many of our youth to respond to the call of the priestly and religious vocation. Again, strengthening our sense of the sacred. And many of you might not know that uh, through our Build My Church program, we are able to build chapels in rural and depressed areas, and we continue to do so, and thus bring the physical church, as it were, closer to the unchurched. Yes. Yes, Father Gio. So Please share with our viewers today, what is our call as a as CFC? Yes, we take this occasion to issue this call to further intensify, intensify our work in CFC so we can help address what ails our society right now. And uh, perhaps many of us initially, we may have thought that by joining and supporting CFC, we only benefit ourselves and our respective families. Now, I, uh, through this episode, I hope that we have also opened our eyes that what we do in CFC is not just for us, but also has a positive impact uh, on the society around us. Thank you, Mother Show, for all those insights and your sharing. We now understand better that to address the ailment of society, to help heal society, we have to begin with ourselves because society is us. And it's good to know that CFC's uh, mission is to transform us, to enable our renewal so that we help change the face of the earth. 
And uh, it's this is a great time to remember that because it's our anniversary. So, Brother yes. Joe, let's pray for our society and uh, please lead us in a short prayer for this uh, episode. Yes, thank you, Brother Robert. It is an honor. So, if I just would like to invite everyone to first uh, quiet then and quiet uh, in our uh, quiet down in our hearts and. Um, feel, experience the presence of God in our midst and pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, you have created man and woman in your own image and likeness and to be social beings also, interacting with many others and forming many peoples societies, and nations. We ask, dear Lord, that you send the Holy Spirit so that all of your people can live in harmony and peace. Lead us, Lord, to the solutions to overcome what ails our society. Strengthen us to pursue these solutions, Lord. We ask, dear God, that... Uh, you also empower us in couples for Christ with our families, with our friends, to be your instruments in healing the world. Lord, this we ask in the loving and powerful name of your son, Jesus, with the intercession of the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph for your greater glory and honor. Amen. And the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Joe. It was a great conversation. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us in the entire series of What Ails You. Our anniversary theme, Heal the World for Christ, actually reminded us that we need healing, not just from the pandemic, but from many aspects in our lives, our finance, family, the church, community, the environment, our marriage, the poor, and our society. As our journey continues with the victories that we celebrate, we also commit to do more to help heal the world for Christ. I hope that all the lessons and insights that we gathered in this series will help us bring more light and hope to those around us. We will continue to pray for each other. May we never forget that through in and with Christ, there is healing. This is Brother Robert Labayan signing off. God bless you in your family.